there is a galaxy somewhere <laughs> far, far away. Okay. That is, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Lawsuit. Long ago. Take two. <laughs> Dead center in the backwaters of the galaxy, in the neutral zone between three empires and an uneasy ceasefire from war, is an immense space station called Midspace. It is a lawless metropolis run by a crime syndicate and visited by all manner of disreputable travelers from diverse planetary systems far and wide. This is the story of some of those travelers. Dr. Z, a psychic jellyfish-like alien, versed in the arts of hacking and medicine, who pilots a robotic suit of armor. And Cleo, the ursine explosives expert, an immense bipedal bear creature armed to the teeth and not adverse to risk-taking. Arriving in a dimly lit saloon and looking for quick credits, they are the Backwater Bastards. Somewhere in space, there is an alliance of three worlds, an uneasy truce between the human planet of Terra, the synthetic planet of E-137, and the Wraith Moon of the Wraith people. There was a great war between these three powerful empires, but (laughs) they stopped fighting, and now there is not a war, only an uneasy truce. In the what some people consider to be the, the dead center of the galaxy, there's a neutral territory. A s- the graveyard? A small space between all three empires. And in the middle of this neutral territory is a space station. And this immense planet-sized space station is a hub for illegal trade and piracy. Ooh. It's uh, the great, great meeting place of outlaws from all over the galaxy. And on that space station, in a lazy saloon, are our bastards, Cleo de Cap and Dr. Zafre, played respectively by Taylor <coughs> yep. and, and, and Daniel. Time. Hello, I am Dr. Z. So Cleo and I know each other quite a bit already. Been on some, some zany sort of expeditions perhaps in the past. Okay, and have we just been dropped off here? We, we've, you know, we've just come off a ship and just... Found ourselves in the station. Yes, I mean, there's you know, there's there's mul- multiple docks on uh, on midspace, the central space station. This is one of the seedier ones, and this is just, you know, it's just a saloon, like right there, you know. Because what else are you going to do when you've just arrived? You don't know, buddy. I'm going to summon the uh, droid. The, is there a droid or is there a person at the bar? What is there? Oh, there's a droid, a very humanoid, sort of tin can-looking creature. Got w- big, wide, unblinking, sort of headlight eyes. Um. I don't know what type of vibe I'm going to go for uh, with my character yet. So this is a lot of uh, pilot episodeness for myself as well. But um, I feel that way also. Yeah. So we're just going to embrace it and just change it up um, several times, probably. Hey, Tim, mm-hmm. get yeah. over here. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to start saying my bullshit again. Yeah. Busier <laughs> than a mouth in a mitten. The synthetic sort of tots over. Did you want sustenance? Wait, I'm a fucking jellyfish. I need to figure this out. I'm pretty sure jellyfish just eat pain. I reckon you used to just like open up a thing and just like pour booze into it. All right. Well, I do imagine that that is why we done called you over here. Dr. Z, are you buying? Ugh, he's so cheap he wouldn't give a nickel to see Jesus riding a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus exists in our timeline? <laughs> Nickels exist. Bicycles exist. Bicycles <laughs> exist. I just, I just wanted to say that. Uh, two out strengths. Very good. Pivots on it, around on his waist, all the way around, grabbing two uh, very very tall glasses, both of which with a are filled almost instantly with a frothy red liquid, and then pivoting once again. I lean into Cleo as that's happening in the background. Now, Cleo, we need to find ourselves another job. I hear that this station's quite infamous for its lawlessness. We should probably keep a low profile. A 
low profile. Quit going around your ass to get to your elbow. Let's see if we can find some idiot who's willing to part with some credits for some easy work. Look at that one over there. Mm -hmm. He's only got one oar in the water. Mm, nice one. You want to go in first or should we hit this from both sides? Oh, <laughs> oh Dr. Z, you always did know my style. <laughs> All right, we pick up our drinks and slowly walk over to the table. Well, the nearest table. What's this fellow look like? <laughs> There's a fellow all in black. He's got a big, floppy, wide-brimmed hat which obscures most of his features in shadow. How's it, Strider? <laughs> <laughs> Is he a space ranger? <laughs> I mean, he he's, could be some sort of space ranger. Is he meant to be king, but he's, like, abandoned it all and ran away from his past? Well, he's got a uh, sort of a... Uh, a long floppy jacket. Oh, this is a classic and, uh, character. Buckled boots hanging at his side. Yeah, uh, looking uh, what, a quite a well used but well maintained looking blaster pistol. He seems to laze there, looking at his drink. Hello there, stranger. Mind if we join you? <sighs> he just sort of grunts, and squeaks his chair across the uh, the dark grey floor, slightly out of the way, making room at the table. Alright, I uh, push another chair over towards Cleo, so that she's got two chairs. <laughs> you can put one ass on each chair. Yeah. You better not say that to a lady. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna jerk a knot in your tail, boy. <laughs> Why are you pushing that second chair over my way, Dr. Z? Mm, What's that about? Maybe I have I miscalculated. <laughs> Is Cleo sort of like, what, like seven, seven foot tall or so? Or, or yeah, even real more? big. Like a big bipedal Maybe bear? Maybe more. Yeah. You two are, in a, are an odd looking pair. Yes, well, I suppose. Well, now that just ain't polite. I suppose an ursine is not often seen carrying around a fishbowl. We've heard all of them before. Mm, boy, I hope that's not how you greet everybody new that you meet. Yes, no matters here. This ain't a small star system, friend. Your appearance is not my concern. I could not help but overhear, however, that you might be looking for work. Well, now that might be true, depending on who's paying. Mm-hmm. And I clink glasses with Cleo. What kind of credits you got, boy? I can offer a cold, hard 300 credits. The person that finds me, mm. the person I'm looking for. Oh, it's very nondescript, but uh, go on, give us a little description of the face. I'm quite the good artist. I'll uh, get out my sketch pad. He, uh, he pulls out a little device from one pocket and sort of clicks a little, little knob on it and out comes a little holographic image of a bus of a sort of very thin-lipped looking tentacled alien. Blue skin, has tentacles for hair that are all slicked back and quite a ragged snarl on his face. One of his eyes looks like it's been shot in at some point. Oh, Dr. Z, that looks like one of your people. That looks like somebody you know. Not everyone with tentacles looks the same, dear Ursine. And I'll put away the uh, sketchbook. All right, all right. Fancy. 300 credits, you say? Alive or dead. It's all the same to me. Okay, okay. Do we know the species that's on this hologram, or is it something I can roll to try and? Yeah, like how would we do? Like, you could a roll. You could roll check. a a knowledge check. Oh, okay. Which, um, oh, neither of you have any advantage or disadvantage to knowledge. So it's just a straight roll, straight d twenty. Okay. Oh, excellent, excellent. I rolled a okay. eighteen. That's actually really good. Uh oh. Doctor Z peers into the hologram. Robot hands start uh, stroking its robotic frame uh, of the, the edge of the glass bowl tapping as the uh, jellyfish inside starts lighting up with bioluminescence and thinking. <laughs> what have you rolled there, Cleo? Listen, it's an eight. <laughs> Cleo goes, what the hell is that? <laughs> that looks like a plate of zoba worms. Dr. Z does in fact recognize the species. Looking at this mottled figure in the hologram, and he can tell that it's a, um, a member of the Darks species. D-A-R-C-S. It's the planet that uh, is on the outskirts of the human systems, highly colonized with human outlaws, but the indigenous people of that are the dark darks, of which this uh, bounty is. And Dr. Z is real excited to capture him because it's another alien that he gets confused with a lot. 
Wait, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not no zoologist. I'm just a doctor, a bad doctor at that. He's got a big chip on his shoulder. Do I know anything about its uh, like uh, physical attributes? What's what's going to be good to take it down? Well, they're generally um, much like a human in terms of their um, physical capabilities. Mm-hmm. They're you know, a, a bipedal humanoid that are. Uh, yeah, that, that favor blaster weapons and shields and the like to keep themselves alive. Well, 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 Cleo, we've got ourselves a dux. If I'm right, then this fella's probably quite dangerous. Oh, Dr. Z, that feels like it might be more than a 300 credit job. Mm, now, no, you are no correct hazard there, pay. Cleo. This will involve a little bit of hazard pay. Hazard pay and whatnot, and ammo, mm. and all the stops we're going to have to make. I had a bit short you of know? clips for the old blade, and we're probably going to need some med packs. I know, mm. I know. Now, what was the inventory we last gonna. took, Cleo? I think everything was nearly out. We're going to... Uh, Everything Maybe was. need to get... I mean, I don't even really know. a few guards. If we can drive mm, there. Get a bit more We don't even have a ship. And then we both look. <laughs> if you can get the job done today, I'll pay 400 Well, now, you didn't mention express pay, friend. Mm, express pay, that does change it. Expedience is what we're all about. Mm, yes, as you can tell, we're both quite dexterous. Hmm. That is what they say. Now, where was the last place this Dux was spotted in this station? You just point on my system map, baby, and we find him. <laughs> he uh, pulls back his hat to get a better look. The um, the shadows sort of, you know, being cast back, and you sort of see that he's got a, a cybernetic section to one side of his face. It's all mm. just shiny chrome and completely like, as like an eye patch. Like there's an entire missing eye. There's no no cybernetic replacement for it there. Oh my god, beautiful. I should have been a chrome boy. What have I fucking done? Glances in with his one good eye and uh, zooming in on the system map, zooming right into the station where you are and then sort of rotating the thing and he finally points to a, a building not particularly far from where you are right now sort of just back past no where you came either. past the past the docking station. I just rolled a quick hack there to try out hacking. While he's doing that, I want to try and uh, quickly hack out some more information from our strange friend here. Maybe while he's interfacing with Cleo's map. All right, so you've rolled, what, five? Plus five is a 10. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to hack his device that he's carrying? You tell me, like, so in this world, what do you... Can I just make up stuff and you're going to roll with it? Do you want it to be more... In, in a lot of ways, yeah. Restrained. But okay. We kind of we kinda were like... We, we do want to establish a, a general sort of world building stuff as well. Yeah, okay. It was hacking. I'm, I'm thinking that you need to sort of like straight up interface with a with an item, with a thing. R2D2 what about styles. Wi-Fi, man? What about Wi-Fi? Ah, with the Wi-Fi, it's got much better security. If I can do something on a very surface level that doesn't involve kind of interfacing with uh, our strange friend directly... I'd like to just try I mean, and you're glean. you're telepathic. <laughs> okay, well, you're trying to plug oh, yeah. a USB right into this motherfucker's neck. Okay, so I should be rolling <laughs> telepathy now? Yeah, if, if you want to like, okay, read like, his mind. I, I'm going to roll telepathy instead, and while he's looking into the map and uh, trying to figure out... Listen uh, thing, to this. I want... Trying to hack somebody's brain? Exactly, that is I'm going to hack his brain. prejudice. Well, he literally can. <laughs> if, if he comes out of his fishbowl, like, that's his power. <laughs> I want to do the... I think Cleo and I would have this established already, that Cleo would know that give Cleo a look and she would know that I'm going to go in for a hack. So I kind of look at Cleo and do the wink of keep him distracted while I do it, go in for a telepathy. And, uh, do you have and eyes? Cleo sees and no, I don't have eyes. I guess link. it's like a wink. I'd, well, I'm, <laughs> I move my tentacles in a way that... There's a gesture. <laughs> Like a nod. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly like that, like a nod. <laughs> Daniel balloons out and... <laughs> 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 now, now, thank you, baby. But now, what were you? You were saying something earlier, maybe about about helping us with a ship, if I do remember. Grunts is like this is becoming more effort than it's worth. I I said nothing of the sort. You you great brute. Almost there, Cleo. Oh. Almost there. Oh, well, I mean, now I definitely am certain that I was not confused, and I do understand, but, you know, this is quality work, friend, and if you want the quality work, you really ought to help us get there. He's right here on the station, you idiot. As um, as the two are arguing, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Z 
is able to uh, penetrate into the surface thoughts of the stranger. Excellent. He can sense quite distinctly that this man is a an assassin who's been hired to do a job by a, by a, syndi- a syndicate on the station that decided that he isn't capable of achieving. And he's particularly worried that uh, the syndicate might found out that he's passed the work along. Can I get a sense of how much money he was paid? Oh, I mean, that's that's, mm. at, that's at the forefront of his source because he can see you know, that uh, Cleo is vying for more and he really needs to make sure that he gets the lion's share of it still. So obviously he was, um, he was offered 800 cold hard credits. <gasps> okay, I lean back at this <sighs> point and, um, and gesture over to the bar droid. Bar droid? Uh, oh, sorry, no, I'd called it a tin before. Hey, t- maybe I should be a self-loathing robot that hates robots but is stuck in a robot's body. <laughs> hey, Tin, we need another few drinks over here. Three of the house. Mm, this can be achieved. As a th- third arm clicks out of the front of his chest to grab the third glass, he tots over with them, depositing them on the table. All right, Cleo. And what was that we were talking about? Danger pay. We're up to 400 now. That'll cover ammunition right. and other expenses, but danger pay. These it darks will. are it notoriously will. aggressive, and I do not like being hurt. And now, you know what? Dr. Z now, I agree, and I was feeling like it might be difficult if we are seen moving a dead docks without a transport. I know we're on mm. the same station and we ain't be leaving that far, but now what are we going to say? We could use a little bit of help moving, maybe a little utility cargo carrier. Really? Really? It is it is not a lot and when to I, be When asked. I say cargo carrier, I'm thinking like something that can come behind me in like a... Uh, like a hovering trailer type thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I can like walk that's, with. That's exactly what I was me. envisioning. <laughs> yeah. Dick is like, wow, I'm getting hustled. <laughs> oh, and, and and because I've worked with Cleo a lot before, I've relayed all of the telepathy information straight away and as I was doing it to Cleo. Because obviously Ooh, we're trying yes. we're trying to like hustle this guy out of the most money we can. So we've got this like tag team thing worked out. You know, and so oh my God, we're the fucking worst. I've been letting Cleo know the whole time. Okay, just found out. 800, it's an assassin gig, and uh, this isn't going to be an easy job, but we can get some more money out of it. You can see he's like beginning to sort of perspire a little bit now. He's like, well, you, you, you can hire a carriage for 50 quid. Oh, 50 more, 450 if you get it done quickly and discreetly. I think 600, and we can have this done by sunrise, don't you, Cleo? Oh, I definitely agree. No. I think this will be a real quick job, man. It should be quite simple for us to wrap up here, you and I. Oh, <laughs> two old fools running about errands for this strange man. Yes, I think we could do this by sun, sun up or whatever the station. What would the station time zone be? How would we say sun up in this station? Because I imagine that's going to happen a lot. Good question, because there's there's no sun. It's um, literally just floating in the middle of space. So I guess like they might have an artificial um, artificial sun schedule uh, an artificial day night cycle <laughs> it'd be funny if you made a joke yeah. about like by the time that that tin can in the corner gets my fourth drink <laughs> yeah. nice but yeah let's let's say like uh you know the artificial day night cycle or something by the time uh, quadrant c enters its night cycle i think we should have this job done meet you here just a few minutes before the tick i uh, won't go any higher than 500 well, oh, that 600 was sounding mighty good, but uh, maybe we are not the ones to be hired today, Cleo. Enjoy your drink and uh, get up to leave with Cleo. It was lovely chatting to you. Mm, well, not quite lovely, but it was entertaining. No, <laughs> bear laughs. <laughs> but 600, 600 is fine. Oh, there we go. 600, he says. Right, Cleo, we've got a darks to go capture. You stay put, hat boy. (laughs) Hat boy. (laughs) Off we go, Cleo. We need to hire ourselves a transport. (laughs) Ooh, here we go. Been itching for a good hunt. (laughs) I'm gonna... I'm gonna clamber off of my, uh... 
two or three chairs, knock one over, one of them's broken. My legs aren't very long, but I'm definitely going to do a good stretch and scratch my balls as I walk away. <laughs> and Cleo so is hungry, my belly thinks clumsy. my throat's been cut. <laughs> Tin can, you got clean up on aisle three. Let's go, Cleo. <laughs> Spread out like a cold supper. <laughs> the, the stranger just like downing his drink and like staring into space miserably. I love how we have that effect on people. Nice. Now you um worlds. you do recall that they were they were renting a myriad of different transports at the docks, which because obviously people need to unload all their ill-gotten cargo. Looks like it's time for us to go shopping. Stepping out into corridors, there's re- they've really high corridors with an artificial, uh, with a ceiling that shows uh, the day-night cycle. But it is actually like a, just a sort of a, a biodome right now. You're looking out into the stars above. Big wide s- streets that lead back towards the docks where you came from. It's quite a, like a dirty but sort of mottled thing. Everything is made out of um, sort of just matte metal that's been painted various colours and all the different shops, buildings, dwellings and stuff are all just sort of doorways and windows carved into these big, long, straight streets. Nice. All right. Um, while we're walking there, I want to constantly be reaching out telepathically, trying to make sure that we're not being followed or anything. Now that I know that it's an assassin gig, I definitely don't want to communicate too loudly with Cleo, but I also want to be uh, just maybe hacking... Uh, just doing a little little safe kind of um telepath- every time you say what? hacking all i can think about is like the hacker man memes <laughs> <laughs> hacking cuz you're just always like can i i'm going to just you know be doing a little bit of hacking <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah just a little a little kind of surface layer scan of the people around us as we walk towards uh getting this and i've rolled oh, and that is a bang. natural 20 if anybody ever gets to listen to this, please feel free to start compiling your favorite Hacker Man memes for Dr. <laughs> <Yeah>. Z. <laughs> All right, Cleo, lead the way. That's not that hard. Being a three billion thousand foot tall bear, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pawing people out of the way. And I, I walk like the to the right hand side behind uh, Cleo, just like uh, taking advantage of all of the people that have to move out of the way for her. I grab uh, some kind of insectine looking treat hanging off of the awning of a little shop front. Pop that in my big mouth. Keep walking. Really now, people, you really ought to be moving out of my way. Don't act like you can't see me. If I was an inch taller, I'd be round. Oh, that is disgusting. Your eating habits do not amuse me. Oh, come on. It's real good. And if you tried it, I bet you'd even like it. I'm about to drop the rest of it up into your fishbowl, Z. You get your hands and dirty paws away from my fishbowl. <laughs> Cleo's gonna kind of pretend to like start, stop, drop it, like uh, 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 oh, almost. I, and every time she, every watch time out, she does watch it, out, I, boy. Uh, I, I flex the the shield around the fishbowl. <laughs> <laughs> really now, Cleo, this must and, stop. It's embarrassing. And then I do drop it, and you obliterate the rest of the little lobster that I picked up, and then we both get upset. What a waste. <laughs> oh, now look what you gone done. Ruined all my fun. And here I thought we could have a nice time together in the market. I thought we were going to have a good day. But now we just got to be all about work now, don't we? We've arrived, now, Cleo. You always do this. You always do this. And uh, I'll kind of nudge Cleo in the sides and motion towards the vehicle shop. 
shoppy. So Dr. Z with his, uh, his 25 telepathy is got a very good but subtle scanning of life forms within a fairly big radius. I'm thinking like a good sort of, uh, you know, 40, 50 feet of, uh, of safety, mm-hmm. of early warning of, uh, of hostile intent without probing so deep as to be noticed by, uh, by other, other psionics because it's uh, like it's a relatively common ability being psionic it's not like yeah. uh no I'd, I'd imagine that it's not um it's not not uh, completely unheard of it's i mean it's still it's like you know it's, it's like the sort of like five percenter kind of I'd thing imagine like this, this, is, you know? this is as common as people kind of looking over their shoulder making sure they're not followed it's kind of the same thing i guess yeah like when you play a video game and you have like a general like alert radius where you're normal Mm -hmm. and then when you get within like a general zone of threat then maybe some kind of small effect occurs and then when you're in the threat there's like uh uh-oh red zone Mm -hmm. like it's not that sophisticated but you would at least know that you're in the realm of threat yeah but you wouldn't know where it is maybe well i mean he's rolled a natural 20 so i think he would know exactly who it is he would be like look around be like ah it's them all right I mean, Dr. Zafre's senses, I'm, I'm imagining, are entirely psionic anyway. Yeah, I have no feeling through my robotic body. It's just cold steel or whatever. And perhaps, Why do you like, even have it? Uh, just to move around this this fishbowl. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, and, and that's my, maybe why I hate robotics, because I'm used to feeling everything in the water as a jellyfish. But uh, now I've got this cold feeling constantly around me and it causes me to self-loathe the robots maybe I don't know I'm, build- well, I'm I mean, building so on it. few of the civilized planets are underwater yeah <laughs> I'm building on it oh my god if you knew that I had the sleeve engine <laughs> well no I don't want to leave my uh, jellyfish body I'm sure I know about your sleeve engine and your your history but uh, I don't want to leave my jellyfish body I'm very proud of it but I'm not proud of having to be carried around in a fishbowl <laughs> I think I'll, I think I look very good. Mm. Yeah, well, you would do, wouldn't you, if you uh, came from a species of uh, jellyfish? Yeah. I'm a beautiful. I look incredible. So you reach you reach the docks, and there's um you'd already walked past this before, but there's basically just a sort of a stall almost, and just stacked up. A lot of them looking in very poor condition. A lot of them splattered with who knows what muck. But you know, there are various sizes and shapes, carriages, and also sort of mini speeders, like a sort of a hover hovercraft truck I suppose and manning the stall is a very tall and wide alien woman with sort of um, just a, a lot of pink fur Ooh, okay. kind of fluffy oh now look at all of this look at all of these things that we could buy excuse me madam creatureton she looks up from, from some sort of like disc that's seems to be reading the news to her and plops it down on her desk and looks up with a start. How can I help yous? Oh, now we are looking for something, Dr. Z, ain't we? We're looking mm. for something really particular, real special. Particular, special, mm-hmm. fresh, something nice, something beautiful, but something that blends in, carries about, I don't know, the weight yeah. of a dark Yeah. <laughs> so <Is> subtle. <laughs> You got anything like that, sugar? She nods wearily and <laughs> walks only two steps where there's just a massive pile of, you know, almost sort of like coffin-shaped and sized carriages. Oh. Mm. oh okay, well, we're off like a herd of turtles, I guess. Now, these aren't really looking like what I thought we were about to see. Now, do you have anything a little... Utility you know, a focus. Something, something in the back. Blends in a little bit better on the old corridors. Maybe <laughs> something that you would have saved for a more discerning shopper. Cleo flashes a credit. Oh, right. There we go, Cleo. I think that's exactly what we're looking for. Mm, it is, it is. If you say so. And she uh, uh, stretches and sort of shoves the, uh, the smaller carriages out of the way and sort of pulls back a curtain. And behind there's... Uh, it's so much larger. This would look like, you know, like two or three people could sort of sit around in the back, squatting in these oh, things. This is nuts. Just like a, just like a, oh, now that like was what big, I was talking about. Big floating matte gray refrigerator almost, but laying on its side. Oh, now this That's is exactly. some high class transport stuff right here. But Cleo remembers herself. 
and does not want to be too jazzed about it because then we can't get a good deal and she makes an eye at Dr. Z. Oh, I, I swim around in the bowl. Yes, <laughs> 50 credits. 50 credits and a 30 deposit. Oh, a deposit. Well, what do you think about that, Dr. Z? Does that look like what we were looking for? Now we were just looking to hire it until tomorrow's sun tick. Oh, that's barely a minute. Mm, yes, it's barely. very close. Oh, the time's going so fast these days, Cleo. And you know, we might really not even need it that long. Mm. We might barely even use it. Though we would like to get some type of <laughs> Real... insurance on it, I think. Nothing too crazy, <laughs> just might. a little bit of wear and tear, perhaps. We, we are moving house, you see. Uh, undercarriage water protection, you know, yeah. do you have that? Dirt and sand and possible claw marks, blaster fire, you know, the, the oh, regular... Sand! It gets everywhere. I oh, hate it. Oh, it does, Cleo. It does get everywhere. That blaster fire too may be <laughs> a real problem. It does get everywhere. Problem, but gets, uh, the sand is more. It gets everywhere. everywhere. Yes. <laughs> She's looking everywhere. rather nonplussed at the notion that you're going to take this into the middle of a firefight. You get the impression that that's pretty, um, pretty normal at this particular establishment. Mm-hmm. If you get it back quick enough for me to release it out again. I suppose I can do you it for 20. You still gotta pay the 30 deposit. And any insurance? She, uh, she sort of looks over and like removes her, uh, her spectacles. Does it look like we provide insurance, young man? Well, <laughs> I like it. I feel real good about it, Dr. Z. I do. Hot and blue blazes. All right, well, I'll, um, I'll walk over to, uh, place the credit, uh, to, are we, maybe do we scan like fingerprints or something? For exchanging credits. I don't know. I already I've said I flashed about, one. Like in Star Wars and stuff. Like what? Uh, what? Uh, I pictured it like in the Mandalorian, where he has like <laughs> best car, like yeah, chunks. I, I reckon it's like um, like it's the same stuff that is the sort of the the primary energy source. So like um, all sort of space stations and blasters and things like they use the same energy source, and then you can sort of get energy generators on your command ships, or yeah, you know, say you're staying in a hotel and you sort of charge everything up and that but like it's all based around this this one medium of everything just fucking works on it or do fabricate we want, shit as do we want to go like stuff. old school and have like credits be like kind of unused bits of like kind of rough worn bits of metal and stuff you know ha- given an actual weight and physical currency type oh, thing i'm sort of imagining them as like it's like a tubey type thing of like a really dense mm. material oh, okay, like, it's like a heavy metal i like that i'll um i do like the idea of of it it's like you can get a like really a credit like, chip yeah. and in a pinch you can like yeah. just like force it into your blaster to give yourself some more juice and stuff. All right. Um, that's kind of ready player one. like that. You know, where they use that yeah. their point system. Or like that one movie. Oh, fuck. Now I can't remember any. That movie where Justin Timberlake needs more tattoos to live. Oh, I don't <laughs> know what you're talking about. <laughs> there is a film where Justin Timberlake lives in the hood and it, with all the other poor people and the only value currency in the whole universe is like time lived and so all the poor people have a couple minutes and rich people have like a thousand years and And justin timberlake's trying to like he's trying to save everybody you can lose you pay for everything with time and then you look at your tattoo and like some of it goes away and it says oh shit six your arm has like a tattoo stopwatch on it it is not a great movie but the concept is valid (laughs) <laughs> I've seen that movie. It's really not very good. <laughs> but I'm going to pay with these. It's called Justin Timberlake Tattoo. Save the all day. Right. Help all the poor people, even though. I believe these credits Justin will Timberlake. be enough. I'll, I'll, I'll procure, procure the vials. Let's look them over. The cylinders of credits. She very quickly sort of just snaps them into a little till in the counter and nods and hands over a bracelet thing which controls the the carriage and just sort of it <laughs> like a water park key for along. a locker <laughs> yeah exactly it's like a little it's like a little, little bracelet with a little dongle on it that's the uh, the remote <laughs> <laughs> oh baby that ain't gonna fit on this arm that ain't gonna fit on this arm dr z can we drop that in your fish tank or no, what no i'll put it around my wrist oh you ain't no fun at all <sighs> i've got my fishbowl severely uh, bolted and locked up it's almost seamless how uh, smooth the circle is now because uh, i know that uh, cleo will always try to drop something in <laughs> <laughs> that I is that very a, on brand thing. i can already tell i'll now lean in now um about that insurance uh we were looking for some rounds of ammunition perhaps a few explosives 
med kits, shield packs, some armor, a little bit of uh, you know camera systems, you know all these high tech things. We'd much we'd feel much safer if we had these with us. And got any connections? Mm, things that go boom. Mm, yes, one of her favorites. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Strange that you would ask. She sort of almost rolls her eyes, like. There's another stall set up by these docks just across the way. And she points negligently. Meanwhile, Cleo is kind of like adjusting straps and clicky things, and she's putting ammo in different weapons, and she's charging them up, and you hear some <laughs> noises, and, you know, unlocking the safety on some things. So, Cleo, how do we want to tackle this? You going in hard and fast? Or are we taking this slow and subtle? Hotter than blue blazes, my friend. We're going hotter than a goat's butt in a pepper patch. Let's get them. Yes, now should we do the old uh, hidden surprise, one of us in the carriage, or you want to go in both, just walking this thing around? Oh, you know I love it when we go together, my friend. Right. Don't leave me hanging. We're a team. All right, um, we do a quick resupply at the shop. All right, so, uh... Sort of just generally stocking up on med kits. Uh, I guess Dr. Z is so, you know, topping up to, to what is written on his character sheet. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cleo, literally just as many explosives as she can carry. Yeah. Plug and play, like so. fully charged up energy blade and blaster rifle. So we're ready to roll. Nice. And uh, after just some solid bartering with the stallkeeper, you're on your way. And curving round, the um, the walls to your sides become a bit more intermittent in the actually in the, in the sort of sh- the shape of great tall skyscraper buildings. Mm. And you've moved into a more um, residential type area. Dr. Z's scanning is becoming a lot more difficult because there is a lot more projected, you know, like potential violence. The sort of thugs hanging in alleyway corners, you know, eyeing the two of you up, trying to decide whether or not you'd be worth mugging. Awesome. There's other people walking faster because they think that you might mug them. Since it's Dr. Z, a massive bear, and a um, giant cargo container walking behind us, uh, following behind us as we walk through these streets or alleyways, I'm going to change the telepathy focus from scanning for enemies to be uh, blocking our intent as like a subtle kind of... Makes sense. A subtle block. Shit, so the other people that are scanning can't be like, oh, these motherfuckers here to kill Jeffrey. Exactly, just a base level kind of, you know, nothing <laughs> too overexerting, just a... We're just here picking up trash, don't mind us, we're recycling. Oh, excellent, Cleo. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll walk over and pick up little bits of trash and throw them into the back of the container. Just your regular <laughs> so trash convincing. collectors. Too, we like, really do care about the environment. I mean, look at us. We're creatures. Gotta keep a clean Heavily home. armed fucking aliens with, with that this great big transport device. Yeah. Oh, 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 don't, don't touch that, people. Don't touch it. It's an incinerator. Everything we put in there is going to burn right up. Burn, burn. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're putting the trash in there now. Be going on your way, because we're busy. We're working people. So it happens. No one really seems to think you're worth the risk of fighting, Yeah, especially since Cleo is just strapped with weapons. <laughs> oh, right. So you, without, without too much effort, you make it to the building that was listed as the last location of this darks. And it's a great big Some sort of a dangerous. nasty little sort of slumlord apartment complex, it looks like. Oh, been there. <laughs> and as um, soon as you s- set foot in the door, someone who was sitting in the shadows scampers away. Oh, don't worry. We ain't selling nothing. Yeah, exactly. No cookies for sale here. No need to worry. Just your typical trash collectors. Can we bring the trailer in with us? Mm. Into it, a it, shitty fit. apartment building? Yeah. It, it will get, you'll, it'll, you'll get into the lobby of the building at the very least. Okay, yeah, we go all the way in. And at this point, I don't have any weapons with me, but I'm spinning my hands around wildly, kind of <laughs> looking around the place. Menacingly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. I look to Cleo. Cleo, now, do you know what we're looking for? And I'll kind of uh, bring up that image again of the darks that we're looking for. Oh, I forgot, but I do know now. Mm, sniff them out for us, Cleo. We need, we need to be in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Use your bear. Suddenly... Suddenly, the bear sensibilities kick in. <laughs> <laughs> What's your elf eyes see? Um, oh, can I use a um, <laughs> can I use anything in my kit to try and make a uh, 
uh, synthesized scent of what a darks typically would smell like based on like Wikipedia or whatnot. That's so clever. Holy shit. There is a reason that one of us is the jellyfish in the bowl. I reckon you could um you could try and approximate that with uh with telepathy. But whoa, have you ever smelled a darks? I'm going purely based on Wikipedia things. Like I'm not I don't have any any sense myself, so I'm just going based on like what I can find online. Okay, the internet got a lot weirder yeah. then. Now, according to system <laughs> logs, the darks have this kind of particular scent about them. Cleo, uh, hopefully you can sniff them out. Here we go. And I've rolled oh, an shit. eight. <laughs> well, Uh-oh. a scent immediately assaults um, Cleo's nose. An inescapable scent since it's being projected directly into her brain. And it's uh, not super pleasant. Ooh, something smells bad enough to gag a maggot. <laughs> Well, perhaps that's what we're looking for. Oh, well, all right. I'll be looking for it. I'm looking for it. I'm trying my best. That 500 credits can't happen to me any faster. I tell you what, it is time. We need to get it done by the next tick. Well, yes, baby, but but you getting 100 and I take the other five because I'm big. We ain't playing this game (laughs) again, Cleo. You try it every time. It's not going to work. Well, I need more than you does. Mm -hmm. Shit. All right, all right, all right. And I'll stand guard next to the trailer, I guess, while Cleo's, uh, this massive bear is like walking around the lobby, sniffing. Sniffing him out. Sniffing Sniffing it out. (laughs) Starting up the, starting up a real rickety looking climbing ramp. (laughs) Nothing to see here. Some big noises. Sniffing about. Yeah, there's, there's some people sort of like watching barely open doors, you know, some of the doors close shut. As you sort of make your way through the apartment building, you finally come to one door where you don't actually smell anything like what Dr. Z found on the internet. But um, (laughs) what you can hear is what sounds like a uh, blaster rifle powering up. Mm -mm. Cleo, quickly, duck. What's that, baby? I ain't a duck. You're wrong about that. I'm a bear. I know you've seen that on the While internet. While Cleo's arguing with me, I quickly uh, project a shield over to protect Cleo. And uh, not a second too soon. Oh, you big buffoon. And at that moment, the entire top half of the door is blown blown open as a, uh, as a blaster is fired straight at that closed door. And the door explodes outwards towards Cleo and coming directly at her head narrowly caught by the projected shield, which takes four points of damage. Can't let that happen. So it's rather important nope. that, uh... How did I still get damage if I was protected? No, you didn't. My shield took the damage. Well, no, you you, you didn't take damage. Oh. Dr. Zafra's shield did. Wait, so then does that mean... Oh. So now you've just been protected by my shield, so you're just standing in, a, uh, in the debris field. Now there you go, Cleo. Okay. I said duck, you idiot. Cleo just grumbles and then looks to see where the blast <laughs> <And> came from. <laughs> as the, the dust the dust all sort of settles, you see that there is a Darken, although not the one you're looking for, standing there in the doorway, looking very skittish, holding a large blaster rifle, pointed still directly out at Cleo. What is it, Cleo? Tick tock, okay. we haven't got much time to collect this bounty. You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> 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 okay, hold on. So I can do, I only have the rifle and my hands Mm -hmm. or build an explosive. How long does it take for me to build an explosive or do I have a couple? Oh, you can, you can put them together in a round. Like it's, it's straight up. It's like kind of deal. Like like action, action movie physics. Like making a Molotov cocktail, just like die hard type thing. Yeah. (laughs) Because, like, you've literally got, like, an explosives kit, and these are, like, you know, like, easy space explosives, but literally you just, like, get some ammo and kachik it to a, to either, like, a sticky bomb or a grenade Amazing. attachment. Okay, cool. And so, go. so there's two of them or just one? One is holding there's one the blaster. one that you can see. And then there's one uh, we I don't maybe put, know about. Yeah, I might have put one on the map there. But, <laughs> oh, yeah, so. Okay. I have not he revealed already knows there's two. Okay, well, my thought is that, like, I could blast him, but... 
we might want to ask him a question. So I think I'm just going to try to rush in and bear hug him. But I what mean, would, I'm what totally would one game with that. For that. So you're going to have to, you'll, you'll spend one point moving, one point bear hugging, and then you're just going to do a strength check, try and grab him. All right, okay. So there goes a strength check, which is a six. It's a natural one, in fact. Amazing. Am- oh, that isn't fair. <laughs> okay. okay cool. So Cleo so- charging in and attempting to grab this entity in a bear hug. But unfortunately, the hug just goes well high, well above it. Oh. And the um, <laughs> darken, or darks, upon uh, seeing this bear descending upon him, immediately just scurries backwards against the wall, aiming the, aiming the blaster back at Cleo. Outside of range, but it says Dr. Z's turn. Cleo, what's the situation in there? Well, Z, I might have dropped him. Mm-hmm. But he's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll run to the corner. He's in there, boy. Quickly shield up uh, Cleo one more time. I just thought we <laughs> might, might want to ask him some questions is all, and I just, I was too careful with him. He's little. <laughs> Can I do a quick telepathy check into the room? Absolutely. Okay, I've rolled a 24. Okay, cool. We don't have to talk to him. You can do that. <laughs> well, I'm more trying to figure out who's the one we're looking for. I'm trying to scan for emotions and feelings and other things. Okay, so you, scanning the room, there are there are two darken right there that you can see. There's the one that Cleo attempted to attack, and then there's another who is a holding a, um, a pair of energy blades. They're sort of like sticks that are projecting out the sort of translucent yellow field. Mm. Oh, great. You waited until we got in the room to tell us that. Mm. (laughs) Great big wedge. (laughs) You've got one in either hand. But both of them do appear to be like looking back and protecting something as though there's someone else in the room. In fact, upon extending the range of telepathy, you do sense the presence of a uh, of another life form in a back room okay mm. i step in now 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 there's no need for violence we're just here to take someone for a little bit of a conversation with our employer uh if you'd ever be so kind to follow us and cleo here we uh won't need to do anything by force then the nearest one sort of looks up you know what i was like lies You've come to kill him, haven't you? Well, the employer did say something about live or dead, but I'm not opposed to taking all of you alive and you can have a conversation with him. We're just here to get our credits. I did just try to hug. Now, it could have been a lot worse. I could have just blasted the rest of y'all to hell. And now look, you just getting like this and I was just hugging. Yes, now Cleo does tend to get a little bit grabby and huggy at times, but it's better than everything else that you can see connected to her bare ursine form. It is, it is. He's, <laughs> he is not leading you wrong. He's not. All of the ammunitions and, and explosives. I shrug. <laughs> ah, if you hand us over to the syndicate, we're as good as dead anyway. I didn't say anything about syndicate. We won't be taken There's just one man sitting in a bar waiting for a delivery. You don't even know who you're working for, do you? Not too much interested. Cold credits is what we want. These ones are maybe a little bit warmer than normal. I can't tell. Robotic hands. Well, how much are they offering? Not up for discussion, really. How much are you offering? He sort of looks back looks back to his compatriot, and she's sort of like, you know, still got the rifle pointed directly at um, at Cleo. Their tentacles are all sort of like sort of standing a bit more upright on the backs of their heads now as well as they're, you know, considering what's going on. Offer them everything. We're dead otherwise. Now, now, I'm not... We're not interested in just taking your money. We will need to take you alive with us. The option is alive in the container, and you can have a conversation with our employer, or dead and in the container, and we have a conversation with the employer. Either way, I'm trying to double dip here. Isn't that right, Cleo? Get paid twice. (laughs) Cleo is just... The whole time has been looking like... This incredulous little dead-eyed bear face flipping back and forth as everybody's talking. You shouldn't have told us that you had money now. What were y'all thinking? You best be getting downstairs <laughs> into that box because we are now going to be double rich. Isn't that right? We got ships to buy. Come on now, herd yourselves out. I don't want to have to make a bomb in here. This is a nice place. <laughs> it's not a very nice place, but um, <laughs> he, yep. um, his, eye, 
his eyes widening now at this, uh, this lack of any way to bargain, just charges straight in towards Cleo, brandishing both energy blades and a tax. God damn it, we could have just delivered them to them and then they could have fought the guy after we got paid. But no, they're wanting to... Maybe we can still no, do that. That's that's not that's not how we roll, man. No. That's not how we roll. No. And so he attacks me. All right. How bad is it? That's a natural 20. Great. Okay. Lucky I put the shield on you. Yeah. Do I? Yeah. Still? I, no, I projected a new shield oh. onto you. Yep. Oh my God. You can as well. You could like literally interject with a shield and attempt to um, do it if someone's right, about to get right, hit. Right, right, right. Um, okay. Obviously, th- this, w- this way, with like prior knowledge that the attack's coming is the easiest way to do it because you don't have to roll yeah. anything. So, um, yeah, that attack, I- I'll roll damage anywhere, just for the shits and giggles, but it's going to do zero against that shield. Oh. <laughs> One point of damage. Wow, that's funny, though. <laughs> this dark with the energy blades has just hit Cleo de Cap's shield, generously provided by Dr. Z. Oh, yes. Let's roll for damage. It's a little bit irrelevant because although it's done... Three damage. Three points of damage. It just bips on the shield. But Dr. Z is all out of shields. I did my best. I don't even know how I'm going to help you, Cleo. Well, I've, yeah. But I still have two actions. And I'm full health. We've got one action. Oh, wait. But, uh, wait. Yeah, yeah okay. I read that backwards. And it's, it's also it's Dr. Z's turn next. Mm. So they just both... Right. Did I get hit twice by one guy or once by both guys? Once by both okay. guys. Okay, are they actively advancing on me, or am I, like, okay if I don't do anything more? You're standing, because remember, like, one of them shot at you through the door, and then you ran up to try and bear hug him, but you, um, you I missed. missed. <laughs> and then the right. other one ran in and, and like, slashed you up with his energy blades. <laughs> so you're standing there, like, point blank, right next to these two guys right now. Dr. Z is still back in the corridor. Are we trying to capture one of them, or are we just, is it cool if they die? Uh, yeah, it was alive or dead. Yeah, dead or alive. It's, um, yeah, and you, you've sort of, you got the general impression, or I think you just know the outlaw that you're looking for is in the back room and these guys are guarding. Is it cool if I do one more thing? Yeah, yeah I mean, you've got, you've still got a point of energy to do anything you like. I think I'm gonna do a bomb. <laughs> I just feel it in my, in my Well, heart. you don't have any more shields left. And you don't have enough um, energy to make a bomb and run away. Although, it, technically, like, it's your actual turn, so your energy is going to repop pretty soon after Dr. Z yeah. and the shotgun wielding so, darks. If I made a bomb and didn't run. Yeah, you could literally just stand there making a bomb. Like, do, 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 do. That's a pretty fucking intimidating move. But she's holding a thermal detonator. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, that. that's about to happen. All right. Well, let's see. I'm still getting used to the explosive function. So I build one and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. It just means I built one and I have not used it. So I've built one and I rolled. Yeah, so you've built a decidedly mediocre but functional explosive. Is there. Excellent. Uh, is it cool if I just drop it? What are you making? So you, you Basically, you've got a kit full of all like plug and play bits. You can it's kind of like a little baby grenade. Yeah, you can make like sticky bombs on timers, you can make grenades, you can make landmines. I definitely basically. don't want a timer. I want a grenade. Pull the pin, let it go. Let it go, let it blow. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a right now kind of thing. Let her go, let her blow. You're swinging that driver like a washerwoman. Let's have it. Can't sling a, <laughs> can't sling a cat without hitting one. <laughs> can't sling okay, so a yeah, cat like, without yeah, hitting one. <laughs> what? <laughs> basically, yeah, you, you, if you make a grenade, you can then on your next turn or at any point that you have the energy to move you can just drop it for free free action and run excellent that's what i'm gonna do i gave y'all time to think about it this is how you want to act were you raised in a barn but bam just to qualify you're not actually pulling the pin right now yeah well i mean i got to for it to work right (laughs) yeah but you're standing in the explosion (laughs) but i'm dropping it like more towards them you know what? I'll take the blowback. I got full health right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get a little weird with it. I thought you were using like this time to build the explosive at the last minute, no. so that then when you've got your full three energy next time, you could. Okay. Okay. Nope. I'm gonna uh, drop uh, it and stand here, but on them. <laughs> okay, so you're not trying to throw it or anything. Out. You're literally just dropping it in their general direction. Yeah, in his fucking pocket, if I can. Okay, well, both of these guys do still have energy, so they're going to run for it. <laughs> well, it's going to roll a little bit. Let me roll for, like, like hit. 
All right, give, give me a dexterity roll and tell me like where you're throwing because it. Because I'm an expert. I'm a fucking expert. As you're putting this grenade together, these guys are already turning tail. It looks as though the guy with the shotgun is about to jump behind the counter at the top side of the room. Wait, Taylor, could you not just do the classic Star Wars hold the thermal detonator in your hand and just kind of intimidate them into playing nice? Yeah, but I'd be lying if I did that. <laughs> How would you be lying? I'm not really like that subtle. I don't think you need to be subtle to hold a grenade, do you? But I'm not a grenade holder. I'm a grenade thrower, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's my fucking That's brand. And I'm an expert, right? So I built this thing. It's yeah. all right. It's not like a real humdinger or anything. So it's not the best grenade I've ever made. It's a little bit of a half job. It's a. So if, basically, yeah. If you toss this thing because of 10, 15 feet back behind me. Yeah, guys, like I'm going to roll it a little bit. Kind of like, get fucked. As they turn tail and run, there's a good chance you'll catch them and not yourself. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, right. Give, me, give me a dex, dex roll, or not just a normal d20, though, because you've got... Well, actually, we can just take your minus five off it, your clumsiness. <laughs> well, <laughs> you done well, rolled a five. Yes, I did. She is a clumsy bear. Well, that actually would have been a ten if she were not a bear. A human would have made that throw. <laughs> but unfortunately, Cleo's big clawed paws, pulls the pin on the grenade and tosses it. And it, it sort of just drops, it sort of rolls along the floor about about five feet ahead, which unfortunately does leave Cleo inside the blast range. Whatever, man. Blowback. Blowback is blowback. All right. Uh, both these two are just running for it. But it ain't. <laughs> what are you doing in there, Ursa? The, the shotgun wielding darks is going to try and do like that classic slide over the top of the counter. Oh, and he's got a natural 20. He just, he runs oh, straight for it, slides over the counter, ducks down behind it, easily escaping the blast range. The other, other darks, just running for the door and attempting to open it in time. She is not quite so lucky. Oh no! Oh, no. And, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, so her and Cleo are both within the, um, the blast range of this, this bomb, which is gonna smack for um, 3d6 damage. Oh, what? On me? On both All of right, you. Alright, whatever, bro. Would you like to do the honors? <laughs> oh, do I just roll a d20? Um, 3d6. 3d6. Oh, f- ah, right. I heard that, and I ignored it because <laughs> I don't like it. Well, you know what? Six, oh. seven, nine, ten, 11 points of damage. Whatever, whatever. I'm still here. I'm still good. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the darks with the energy blades wow. is, yeah. So you, the both of you are just blown. She goes smacking face first into the wall shrapnel and fire just burning the back of her she is torn apart you can sort of see bits of spine sticking through past her leather-like good garments Bye. she's um just crumples dead on the ground cleo isn't oh. doing a heck of a lot better as she is just ripped up by shrapnel and force she's just sent plonking back skidding on her ass away from the explosion having taken 11 points of damage Oh, I told y'all I wasn't oh, no. messing around. There's a, there's a strong smell of singed fur in the room. That's just another perfume. <laughs> That's just another perfume. Don't worry about it. It's another perfume for a beautiful lady. Oh, no, Cleo. What have you and done? And all this has sort of happened as a, um, I guess you'd call it like a counterattack as we're coming into Dr. Z's turn. Okay, I will walk over to Cleo and start doing some medical Thanks. kit on her. <laughs> All right, so you yeah. uh, start your two and your energy goes back up to three. But as you're doing something, let's just drop it straight back down to two again. Why not? So I've rolled a 14 for my medical kit. So that's uh, uh, nine plus five. And it has healed Cleo for six. Oh, six is not bad at all. I right, look at the uh, sign. No beady little eyes. And say, now why did you go and drop it so close to your oh, big hulking form? I wasn't messing around. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> I'll look over to the uh, the ducks with the shotgun hiding behind the uh, bar. Now, Cleo is almost back at full strength and is not messing around. Would you like to continue? Think about it. Think about it real hard. The ducks sort of slowly uh, rises his head up above the bar. You can see he's still like holding his blaster shakily pointed at the two of you. I say now you can try again with the ursine here and myself or... You and your friend back there can come and take a nice ride with us and meet our employer. You lunatics! 
Oh, absolute lunatics! Yes, yes, well, it's only going to get crazier from here. Fine, fine, I'll get him! Just don't shoot! Well, not really our style. <laughs> it sure ain't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll just help Cleo up. Here's an example if you want to see. You want to try it out? Oh, Cleo, it did seem to work what you did just there, but a uh, bit close, don't you think? Well, well, I, I just, well, it worked. Oh, why don't we head over with this shaky darks and make sure that these two come with us? All right, y'all. We're heading out. I'll just walk behind Cleo and uh, make sure that these two come with us. The darks sort of, almost sort of whimpering and like, you know, freaked out, like slides the corpse <laughs> of his dead compatriot off the door. Yes, it is a shame. It is a shame. But that's what happens with explosives. Dick, if you're going to let him try something, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> opens up the door. <laughs> Already done with this stuff. And he's like, like, I'm sorry, comrade. They, they're they insane. They're just <laughs> dropping grenades on the floor here. I, I can't do it. You're on your own. And he sort of steps out of the way as the darks, who, who couldn't see, but Dr. Z had sensed through the wall steps up to the doorway and you recognize it as the man from the hologram you saw earlier. Ah, yes, we've been looking for you. Uh, also, to the other darks with the uh, shotgun. Leave the gun. The dark sort of scowls places the gun on the counter. Uh, very well. Uh, once we're out of here, you may leave. Just like shaking his head and sort of muttering to himself as the other dark silently walks out. Like looking at you, angry looking eyes, wanders right up over to you. Okay, can I collect the uh, shotgun that was dropped? You certainly can. Cool. I'll, I'll collect the shotgun and uh, hold it in my one good working arm. Cleo, would you mind, uh, what's the word, arresting? Wrapping him up. Handcuffing. Getting him ready to go. Yes. Put him in a doggy bag. Yes. Yes. <laughs> get in, get in here, you. Get in here. Had enough of this shit today. It's been a real hard day. It's been a long day. Mm, well, get, you did make it get harder in there. on yourself. Go on. The transport that we were going to put this ducks in is actually down in the lobby, <laughs> so we still have to escort well, this Well, keep person, going. This ducks. Where'd we park? Where'd we park, Dr. Z? <laughs> he's, he's looking a bit awkward now. He's trying to get in there, but he doesn't even know. <laughs> Having held his wrists together to be handcuffed and now sort of realizing that Cleo doesn't seem to have any, he lowers his arms again awkwardly, almost looking a bit sulky. <sighs> Cleo, give him something that he might think is a grenade, but isn't actually, and tell him to hold on to it and hold the pin in. (laughs) (laughs) So that he has to keep keep his hands together. Do I have to roll for that? Or maybe uh, maybe I can grab it, uh, grab something that I know isn't a grenade off Cleo's armor and and shove it into his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Order him to hold it. Do we need to roll for probability of that working, or can it just be? Always catch me with something. I have no idea how how the mechanics of work. Absolutely, <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah, we provide exactly that product for style. you. <laughs> yeah, without fail. I mean, given that Cleo has just a, a mismatched bunch yeah. of explosives equipment, it's very feasible that any item could be an explosive. I grab something that I think is an, an explosive, but um, but very well possibly could be, and take it off. Uh, could also be my Tamagotchi. You know yeah. What? Exactly. <laughs> it could be a Tamagotchi. A and snack? Uh, push it into the Dax's hands that he's got held together and say, You might not want to let go of this. Because if you do, well, you might be like your friend over there. Bam! Bam, bam, bam! <laughs> yes, bam. You understand that? That makes sense to you? He's like qu- quivering and like clutching it tightly in both hands now. <laughs> a mental warfare. <laughs> He's like looking, looking back and forth between the two of you. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, is, is he going to say anything to us or no? He's being very stoic and silent. He almost looks as though he's like composing some sort of monologue in his head. All right. Well, I'm going to do a telepath- telepathy into his head while we're walking out the door. Uh, and I'm going to do a telepathy into both of their heads and just go, bam. <laughs> He looks at you like, you know, absolute sort of shock and horror, like clutching the thing even tighter as he stumbles along. You sort of, you get, as you enter his mind, you get the, the, just the briefest sense that he is perhaps quite self-important. He's almost a little bit indignant about the fact that he hasn't really been captured properly. Hmm. I don't know. It seems pretty good. It seems pretty good. 
I will assure you, young darks, that uh, you have been captured quite properly. And the two of us are the best in the biz. Yeah. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Peak performance, yes. The two of us, well, we've been known on the station for a long time. The eye of the lager. Yes. Finally scowls He's like, I wouldn't be so proud of being a gangster's lackey myself. Gangster's lackey sounds so... Mm, I don't know. Uh, dark. We're self-employed. <laughs> yeah. Contracted. Yes, yes, contracted. Freelance. Oh, I am in. We're just a couple of freelance artists. What we do is art. How dare you mm. judge it? How dare you? And capturing you today, well, that was more of a draft run. <laughs> yeah. But as you walk down the corridor, there's a lot less interest now that people have heard quite a major explosion. I mean, I, I neglected to mention that the the room is utterly wrecked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the um, yeah, the, the ground, the, the floor has got just a great big cracks and dents. Everything in it, like, is sort of all smashed out. Okay, uh, how far away are we from the transport? Well, you encounter no no resistance along the way, as all the doors are now just tightly shut, and there's there's just absolute silence. You get the impression everyone is just. No, they've just noped out of this now after hearing the explosion. Oh, that's fair. Oh, Cleo, I think we're very close to having another successful contract completed and a cold beverage in the evening. <laughs> so you um, you make your way down to the lobby where your um, sort of coffin-shaped transport hover device is waiting for you. Yeah, I'll open the door. But like, well, almost there, just a short journey back. And he's like looking at the thing. You don't expect me to get in that. Well, would you like to walk along holding that grenade? Or would you like to be in there without the grenade? He sort of like looks back and forth and then sort of, you know, gingerly holds out his hand, still very tightly grasping random scrap metal, probably. Uh, I put my hand out to like catch it. And then I do the thing where I like move my hand last minute to let it drop to the floor. <laughs> it drops to the floor and you see this, this moment of absolute panic and horror in his face, his eyes wide, his mouth wide. And he goes to bolt down the street. Uh, Cleo, push him into the into the thing. Into the bucket or the what is? Yeah, push him push him into the our tra- into the transport. Do container. I have to roll? Or can yeah, I give me a give it? me a strength. Give me a strength roll. Ooh, all right. I think I can do that. You can do this. I got that. Bang. All right. Looks like surprisingly low. Or uh, uh well, because I wasn't trying that hard. This boy's weak as dishwater. Yeah, but he's not gonna try and overpower you. He's trying to get away from your grasp. So what has he got to roll? He's just rolling oh, flat dexterity. On. Oh, shit. Do I have to do another bomb? No, we, we don't need to capture him, so can I just shoot his legs? <laughs> I mean, you've, you've now got a blaster rifle. Yeah, I, I yeah. Yeah, um, or I, how close am I? Uh, am I in melee range or no? You are for the minute. Okay, well then I'm just going to um, sw- swing out my um, energy scalpel and just try and surgically cut one of the legs. All righty. Gross. That didn't, I didn't mean for him to bolt. Sorry, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was trying to show off. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. That, I understand. That's why you dropped the grenade, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I will um energy blade. Okay, cool. I rolled a twenty two. Seventeen plus five. Damage of three. So quite surgical actually. That Works out. Doesn't in, do in massive the damage, way. but you've made an excellent called shot on the um Yeah, because I'm not wanting to do damage, I just want to stop him. Yeah, utility. Yeah. But he does um he does attempt to dive out of the way with one last dexterity dexterous uh roll. He's, oh, well, it's just gonna be easy to kill this man if he fuck, does too much. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be I nice mean, here. We're trying to be we're trying to be you nice. You had you had him on the ropes, but you <laughs> you did sort of drop the ball kind of literally. But I didn't I thought maybe he'd be scared and jump backwards into the into the uh thing or something like that. I didn't realise he was uh was gonna run away. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if running away was an option, I would have thought he did it sooner. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean, he was, uh, you know, he was, he was petrified by this bomb thing that he had. He wasn't sure he would be able to put it down, or if you would just remotely detonate it or something. But as soon as he doesn't have it, and it's definitely going to explode, he's going to run. Fair enough. I just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect it. Which is, uh, oh which shit, is he's on a natural one. <laughs> nice. He attempts to dive roll, but. All he really manages to do is sprain his one good ankle as his other leg is hamstrung up the back with the doctor's energy scalpel. 
All right, you've chosen to do this the difficult way. Flopping on the ground, clearly completely incapacitated, as he's like, gasping, you bastards, you bastards, and sort of looking over at the um the unexploded device on the ground, and then like an even more indignant look on his face as he looks up at Doctor Z, you know, accusingly almost like you lied to me kind of face. Yes, yes, you've been had. Now into the container you go. Or would you like for Cleo here to carry you? <laughs> I can't. Always an option. Stand, you disgusting alien thing. Ooh. Oh, Cleo, Ooh, you I hear think that? he's chosen to be carried. You hear that? I think, I think somebody was asking real nice to be picked up. I think he wants a bear hug. I would say, I would say. Now you're real lucky because I don't do this for everybody. You understand? Oh, special treatment. Just for you. Yeah, come on in here. Come on in here. Oh, this is the cat's pajamas. You smell that? That's from about a month ago. <laughs> he's, he's like squirming and whizzing and like groaning with pain as every time one of his injured legs is sort of twisted or, or bumped. But he's uh, quite a bit smaller than Cleo and quite easy to manhandle now that he is unable to um, escape. Could have avoided that. All right. Well, I guess the uh, trailer follows us, right? Yeah, you got on a little... Bloop, bloop, little keychain thing. All right. We pretended to be trashmen, uh, trash workers coming in. So I guess uh, <laughs> continuing that. We're just taking it out. I throw the thing that the ducks was holding that I put in his hands. I throw that into the uh, container being like, yep, this place is clean now. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just <laughs> chopped a guy's leg and then carrying him down the street. But hey, I'm sure the subterfuge well, will came work. Came to do a job, did some extra. Good Samaritans. So sore, can't touch it with a powder puff. Just your regular cleanup crew. Yes. And uh, we'll we'll walk along. Yeah, we will. We're going to put you so deep in jail, you're going to have to be fed beans with a slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> Interrupting to bring this space transmission. Hey listeners, my name is Dave Cole and I'm the Dungeon Master and host of a Dungeons and Dragons podcast called Stop, wait, Dave, say no more. They'll be enchanted by one of my songs and then they'll be hooked. No, they want to hear about how we slay great beasts. No, they want to hear about magic and sorcery and spellcasting. They will listen for the story, the rich history, the lore, or we can just roll the dice and let fate decide. You're right. If you haven't listened to The Four Orbs yet, find us at www.fourorbs.org or whatever podcast app you use. As you sort of um, carry back down the bar, now sort of getting away from the slum where you cause all the ruckus, people are paying a lot more attention to you now and sort of curiously and nervously looking at the fact that you're carrying some sort of injured guy. Oh, nothing to see. We're just... Uh... An insurance company come to help out one of our valued clients. <laughs> yep, yeah, look at this service. Could be yours. Yeah, bear and jellyfish. <laughs> insurance brokers. Look us up. Yeah, on, you know, on the cloud. 20G. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Time. <laughs> insurance agency. Yeah. You happily make it all the way back to the bar. Actually, while we're walking back, talk to this, this character. Yeah, of course. So, now why do you think they've got such a large bounty on your head? And alive, even. Or dead. Could have been dead. Probably easier yeah, dead. what you got? What's so interesting about you? You know what's interesting about us. Oh, yes, there's plenty interesting about us. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we could we could go on about it for a long time. I'm sure you'd like to hear couple, it sometime. A couple life cycles, at least. Mm -hmm. He's scoffing. He's like, I'm only the leader of the resistance. Oh, oh resistance shit, oh, shit. now. If Ooh. If you were more than mere lackeys, you might know a thing or two about me. And what are you resisting other than, well, Cleo? You can't even get out of her grasp. So how are you a leader of any resistance? My people will be inspired by my death. You'll, you'll see. Oh, you're not dead, you dramatic. <laughs> oh, not yet. <laughs> we could arrange it if you'd like. We could do a public execution right here. It means all the same to us. We still get paid. <laughs> I man. He's sort of like scowls, still sort of indignant. So go on. Tell us, why do they want you? What have you done? Who are you resisting? I'm leading my fellow citizens against the, the tyranny 
of the, the gangsters that try to stomp down the people of this station. Hmm, yes. And you think we're part of that stomping foot now, I'm sure. There's no think about it. Your actions speak loud. I'm just trying to get paid. So deaf you couldn't hear a fart in a jug. <laughs> That's the problem with everyone in this system. All they care about is the credits, not the freedom of our people. Well, we won't take it any longer. Mm. And so what do you plan on doing about it after your little chat with our employer? I hope it goes well for you. I really do. You're naive if you think I'm going to come out of this alive. You have signed my death warrant, taking me to this place. Well, we've still got a little bit of a journey left. Do you have any last minute plans? Quests? Anything we can get for you? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything we can get for you? Oh, okay. <laughs> Wouldn't want you to be uncomfortable. Little biscuit, <laughs> freeze dried ice cream, Ooh. pea turkey squat, mm. fried caro bug. Now, Cleo, I think you're just saying what you'd like. <laughs> Maybe I am. Maybe I am. I am sustained by the satisfaction that my actions are right. Oh my God! Are you trying to get turned in? We're giving you a shot. Let's have it. Give us your best idea. We're only in it for credits, so... We can be bought. Uh, uh, surely you have figured that out. We are not proud. No. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> we both chuckled to each other as we're walking along. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it is what it is. The scowling was more like, you've seen my neighborhood. My people have no credits to spare. Well, not everything has monetary value, I guess. <laughs> You what, heard the man. Uh, what are you proposing here? Value <laughs> comes in a lot no, of little I, forms. No, I'm going to take that back. I don't know what I was proposing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just speaking. I really I liked just, it, though. I mean, I was just speaking. I didn't know what, what sort I was of gonna reproductive say. organs does Doctor Zafra have? Not everything has a monetary value, girl. That was not a sexual proposition. That was just like maybe he has like a starship, <laughs> or maybe he has like a droid that he's not using. But or we some... still want something with monetary value. Yeah, we want something. Yeah, I guess we so. just That's want true. him to know that like we we are willing to can negotiate. Can be bought with other shit. Yeah, we can be paid maybe, off. Maybe maybe he's got a cellar full of space potato. <laughs> maybe we want that. Who knows? Do we remember how much we were gonna make? 600. That's, it. that's quite a bit. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a reasonable amount. Buy a oh, bunch of guns with that. Cleo, I just, I just realized what we could what? do. Well, there's the exploded darks back there that can't be recognized, probably. Oh. <sighs> we could just say, you know. Hey, this is him. This is him. Uh, let's, let's say that to this uh, character right now. How are they right going to, like, actually have proof, though? Like, oh, probably DNA, actually. That works. <laughs> that works now, so this probably works in the future. <laughs> I guess it's the future. Yeah. Um, Fuck. Well, I, I, if we were saying that out loud, maybe. We could take some of his DNA. And but also, why are we trying to save this guy? Like, he's not offering us anything. I know. I don't know. Ugh. I don't know. For the last time, we're He reasonable. isn't trying to get away. Give us anything. Offer us something. We're being paid measly for your death or capture. Uh, that's back on track. I like that. Now, we'd be willing to... Do any type of trade. We're just waiting to hear what's on offer. Make it good. I, I can offer you positions in the glorious revolution. No, no, we're not part of any team. We're part <laughs> okay, of our Carl own Marks. team and no one else's club. Thank you very much. I don't care for your resistance. Take me to your leaders then, lackeys. Oh my god, fine. Oh, he well, wants to die. Uh, That's wants, how it's yes. gonna be. Yes, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I think he does. Okay, should we just throw him over the edge now? Means all the same. My martyrdom will spark the fire that, that leads my people to freedom. Well, great. I don't think so. Do you even have a name? <laughs> Carelox. He's not going to be remembered at all. He can't even remember his own name. Well, clear. Oh, let's go shit. get our drinks. That's all we're getting paid for. There's a round all at the right. bar. Ugh. Martyrdom for, the, for a few cold beverages in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> Cheap. Well. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes this is a real hard job. We don't always get the kind of appreciation that we that we really deserve. We are really we are hard working individuals. We are out here day in and day out and we are constantly, you know, and just and 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 screaming like a mashed cat with 
with eight lives left and well well Cleo I would say I do appreciate what you did back there I thought it was very smart on the thank on the job thank thinking you. thank you uh you know it was uh, thank you got us out of a tight pickle there very quickly it, 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 well it almost put us back in a pickle too but it did but we got it and how brave to have that explosion just go off straight in your face I mean <laughs> stupid and brave this is becoming like a like a cliche of like, right. like Cleo's uh Cleo's modus operandi is like ah oh, just blow it up <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could pretty much end most combat situations instantly if you just plant a bomb. But eventually, someone who's not supposed to die is going to die. <laughs> well, not yet. We'll see. We'll see. We don't know. We don't know. It's mm. new. It's it's shiny. It's big. It's bam. I love like, you know? yeah, we, let's both look at the character and go bam <laughs> to the dice <dives> again. <laughs> bam. <laughs> that Shouldn't have let your... us have bombs, Dick. Look what happened. Yeah. Oh, well, let's keep walking. Um, let's swing by the trailer hire place as well and uh, return the trailer, the transport. Do you remember what voice I did for the transport salesperson? Yeah, you were like, Oh, that would be this. It's 50 for the transport. <laughs> really? <laughs> she was kind of like a shitty old lady. Oh, that's right. <laughs> she was like yeah. the old lady from uh, Monsters, Inc. <laughs> okay. Yes, Rikowski. Roz. Yeah. You make it... Make it back to the docks without much trouble. There's a lot of people looking at you and going back into doorways, quite concerned that you're um, carrying some injured person around. But a lot of people as well. You know, this is quite a sort of a metropolitan kind of city. People are just ignoring it, letting you get on with business because they've seen much worse after all. This is mid-space. Yes, leader of the resistance, don't you know? <laughs> Apparently very important. Look at us, big shots. Yes. And I'm the king of potato land. <laughs> and I'm... Yeah, so I'm just a jellyfish in a yeah, bowl. Yeah, we're all somebody important today. As soon as you come back to the Speedster Rental Report, she's just over the thing very cursorily, like making sure there's no major damage being done to it. It's like, oh, I guess you'll be wanting your deposit back then. Yeah, I would say. Mm-hmm. Look how nice. It's even cleaner now, almost. It's almost like it's even nicer than when we got it. Well, look, we didn't even need to use that, it. But I, I yeah. don't want to know anything about your dealings. We ask no questions here. No, you should know. This man is apparently a resistance leader. It's very important. She looks looks down at the darks for a little while, sort of inspecting him, like moving her glasses up her nose, like, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, is so- like, can we just crystallize that moment as like whatever your weird little thing is and you tell like <laughs> <Yeah>. your mom? <laughs> This is so funny. I love how he's not getting any respect anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> just getting shat on and he thinks he's so important and he's going to die a glorious death, but he's just... <laughs> oh, this is great. That was the best response, Dick. Good, Good for him. him. <laughs> Ricky, you should be somebody's like old shitty mom. Someday. Well, you know, you yeah. never know. <laughs> Maybe I already am. Can we ask the uh, the transport lady for her name? <laughs> who who are? Well, uh, we'll be back. Uh, how, what, 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 what do we call you? <laughs> Mama. 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 They all call me Big Pat. Oh, Big Pat. Oh, you've got a return customer. We'll be back. Probably not with this fella. Very important, you see. <laughs> Your credit's always good here. Oh, Mama, that is just... That's great to hear. You do yourself some good business today now. See you soon. <laughs> yeah, we'll be seeing Play you. Off. We'll be seeing you. We'll be back. We, You know it. You know we'll be back. She sort of like grunts and then sort of gets back to the little projection screen that she's been looking at on the counter. <laughs> and her poor friends and stories. Now, now, not far to go for you, big shot. Oh, you're almost to the to the checkpoint. It's been so difficult walking you here this whole way. <laughs> Everyone's been stopping us for your signature. Oh. <laughs> Now, now, get back. I'm going to have to get my stick out. Beat mm. off all the all the fans. Yes. All the fans, all the little boys and, and whatever come by to throw a tomato at you or whatever. Perhaps we could charge people for a little chance to take a photo with them. Oh, a photo? Oh, my God. For your for your stellargram. The leader whatever. of the resistance. Oh, that would be good for your oh. media, wouldn't oh. it? Hashtag, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever y'all are about. You laugh now, lackeys, but my people have seen your faces. Oh, no. Oh, yes, everyone's seen our faces. We're a jellyfish and a bear. Everyone knows us. Yeah, I'm sorry, but, you know, (laughs) yeah. We'll be remembered longer than you. You don't even have a name. Mm. Hot mess. Call you that. Uh, As as you approach towards the bar, there's a bouncer droid. 
a very sort of tall, headless, quite military-looking um, machine. Ooh, I like that. It's a big chest with a um, yeah. with a hat sitting on top of it. Got a name? I mean, as, as, as far as you know, it's just the bouncer droid, though oh, it cool. probably, do, probably does have a name. Oh, that's cool. And it sort of... Yeah, it normally just sort of sits there and just sort of like makes little beep boop boop noises as everyone walks past. Every now and then, someone who's been barred from the bar might get stopped by it, but it's, it's generally, you, you've never really encountered its um, any attention from it at all. But it sort of, it quickly stands up to its full height and takes one step towards you and says, My employer would prefer if you would use the side exit for this kind of business. Well, look at you, special again. We get to use the side door today. You must be it very important. It ain't the back important. door, but it's something. Hmm. Very well. Uh, lead the way, or shall make our way ourselves. The bouncer just the just sort of goes, mm. and um, it's the little sort of mounted eyeball type camera device on its chest nudges off in one direction towards the alleyway. All right, down the alleyway we go then. Um, can I? Uh, I want to do a telepathy kind of thing make sure that we're you know all good walking down here i don't want any surprises so telepathy or hacking uh whatever you think is going to be useful here um well, i mean either or could be but i mean telepathy is obviously for the most part any life forms at least it will um yeah i'll just do a quick scan as we're walking like a down thorough sort of scan around dr z can sense there's no one waiting in the alleyway although just inside the door there seems to be one life form lingering very near which might be a little bit strange, as all the staff of this bar tend to be robotic. All right, Cleo, you hold him tight. I'll get the door. <laughs> all right. And uh, I'll pull the, the gun up and uh, hold it forward, Terminator style, <laughs> and go over to open the door. <laughs> all right. Uh, now's your last chance. Now's your last chance to get out. Uh, I got you. Knock the gun on the door and say, delivery. The, the door just opens at a really casual, normal sort of speed. And standing there is Dietz, the droid. What? Dietz, the, the droid manager of this establishment. It's a, a tall, slim, rather junky-looking droid made of um, parts that have been sprayed various dirty colours of paint. Aside from um, one arm, which is just a sleek, shiny, military-grade piece of work that looks like he's been upgrading himself. Ooh. Very fancy. Fancy, like a brand-new chrome refrigerator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, that's real nice. Hello again, Dietz. Oh, it's you. Yes, we've been uh, we've been commissioned to bring this fine example of a dox. I seem to recall I commissioned someone else for this job, and he sort of like turns around and glares, and sort of standing there nervously, using his long blaster rifle almost as sort of a walking stick as the dark fellow from the bar, sort of looking a little bit sheepish. Yes, yes, well, that man hired us for the job. You could just pay us, I guess. Cut him out. He didn't really do much. <laughs> and Deet sort of, like, looks at the guy and he's like, You know what? That sounds about right. Shoo! Flicks his robotic hand, a bounty hunter, looking very upset, you know. Scowls at Dr. Zafre and raises one finger as they, like, Oh, you shouldn't have done that, as he wanders back off into the bar proper. I slap a uh, Cleo. And uh, the darks and pointed him and say, Ah, look, we've done it again. <laughs> More enemies. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Better luck next time. <laughs> Y'all come back now, you hear? Maybe help if you want If you want to be cut in. Just just a thought. And he's just sort of strolled off angrily back into the bar. Again, still just sort of like leaning on his blaster rifle idly as though it's uh, a walking stick. Whatever, whatever, we can't. We can't be responsible for feelings. Dietz looks down at the injured darks in Cleo's hands and says, So you're the squatter who's been leading his neighbours in a rent strike. <laughs> rent strike? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and Dietz, get this. He calls himself a resistance leader. <laughs> we, we won't sit down and let you, you criminals control the station. And Dietz sort of just slaps him hard across the face with a cold robotic hand, blood splattering onto the floor. And Dietz, again, with his, his cold, eyeless, disc-shaped head looking down at the dark and says, You can pay your rent like everybody else, or we will make an example out of it. Oh, now Dietz, he was saying he would like to be made an example of. Didn't, isn't that right? 
Old martyrdom was your desire. I remember something like that. I do. I I remember hearing something like that. Deed so sort of just lets out a buzz whistle that perhaps you know represents cool annoyance as he uh, reaches down and grabs the the darts by the scruff of the neck. I think I'll be taking this one. I don't commit this sort of business in in the street. Yes, understandable, Deed. Understandable. Um, as for the credits. Yes, yes. He points, and you can see now that you're, like, in a sort of a kitchen, it looks like, uh, out back of the bar. Sitting on the bench is just a little box with a tidy little stack of the little vials of liquid, shiny liquid, that represent credits in this part of the galaxy. Ah, excellent. Now, how about that drink, Cleo? How about it? How about it? I think that we earned a drink today. I done blow myself up. I brought this bad one, this wild man. Resistance leader. Mm, you know, so he says, so he says. But it's an alleged title, really. There's no certificate here, I don't mm. think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's time for me to take my hard-earned credits and go on and buy myself something nice. Deet sort of just nods and, like, dragging, practically lifted right off the ground with one arm, injured darks. He just idly points his other arm at a, sort of a big, wide, double doors. His bars through the Knock yourselves out. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Excellent doing business with you, Deeds. Yes. Pleasure as always. And uh, we walk on through. <laughs> and perhaps Level a, uh, a familiar face is sat at the bar. Oh no. <laughs> So the resistance uh, guy didn't do any more talking. Maybe I should have given him some more talking, but I I don't really know what to what else to do with him. Like, he's just it's dead of, now. Bye. It's, it's a it's a bit dark, isn't it? Like he's like he's he feels so strongly, and he's um he's he's just going to get taken out back and killed, and probably all his neighbors are all going to be like, okay, fuck that guy, and pay their rent. <laughs> I know, I feel bad now. When oh, you said shit. it was a rent strike thing, I was like, fuck. Oh, I didn't feel bad about it. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you fucking aristocratic. I was like, shit, I don't want to pay my high rent either. I feel you, little man. I don't think it's... Yeah, that but we don't. I mean, he, okay. he might just get roughed up. You know, you never know. He might break quite easily. <laughs> you never know. He might break very easily. <laughs> Although he did did see his friend get exploded and then have his, like, his hamstring sliced open and still uh, you know, kept up his, uh, his tough guy facade. So I guess we'll never know. That whole bit about him not getting respect was kind of hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. I liked that. Good for him. Yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs> Good for him was the best part. <laughs> I'm going to have that fucking... play at the very end of the episode again. Just repeat. Just go. <laughs> Please. Good for him. <laughs> this exactly guy is a member, is the leader of the resistance. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else you want to tie up on this episode then, Dick? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Ah, uh, yes, thank you all for listening. So, uh, yeah. We, here we are in space, still just Where as no bastardly as ever, though. Scream. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, if you want to hear our um our fantasy campaign, which we just wrapped up, you can find that on uh, backwaterbastards.com. Yes, yeah, it's our very first adventure from uh, us doing this actual play podcast, and uh, it's all there. Playing Dungeons and Dragons. Don't forget to clear your web yeah. history. But now we're playing Orbital Refuse, and it is a game made and uh, devised. What's the word? Just made by our very own DM, Dick Dynamite. Yeah, all of that. All yeah, of that. I mean, we're, we're beta testing it right now. Or are we alpha testing it? I don't know, but we're testing it for sure. And you can definitely uh, join us for the journey, and maybe one day you'll be able to get your hands on a little book. Play it yourselves. Oh, you know, speaking of um, Dungeons and Dragons, I just saw the, um, some of the play footage, Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, yeah. Me too. It's very Divinity, Original Sin 2. I just love how it, like, turn-based combat and shit. Like, it looks like it fucking plays like Dungeons and Dragons, which I'm so into. What? Did you play Divinity, Original Sin no, 2? No, I, I played the first two Baldur's Gates, but... um. Oh, you would love it. If you're, if you're looking for something to play while you wait for that game to come out, then highly recommend I've been back on Elder Scrolls Online. Oh. oh. I got banned off that. What did you do? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was bothering people. <laughs> <laughs> As bad girl Riri. Yep. Yeah. Ow!
Oh, well, that was more fun than a sack full of kittens. Now, y'all better come back now you're here because I got a grenade with your names on it. Dude, that's pretty good. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice. And if you have any spare credits that you'd like to get rid of, you can send them our ways through our Patreon no, we like links em. in the show notes or on our and website. And you better check out our Patreon because we redid it and there is actually cool shit to get, okay, for real. For we re- worked re- real hard, for real. Tune in next time for another Edge of Your Seat adventure in space with the Backwater Bastards. If you enjoy listening, but also have eyes, check out our Instagram, where we post drawings, illustrations, character art from our adventures. Backwater underscore bastards. Check out our Instagram on Instagram. Good for him. (laughs) (laughs) That is is like, can we just crystallize that moment as like whatever your weird little thing is and you tell like (laughs) your mom? (laughs) This is so funny. I love how he's not getting any respect (laughs) anyway. Yeah, send me your recordings tonight if you can. I don't know, Daniel. I'm real busy. I know, right? I have a lot of places to be. (laughs) Yeah. On Animal Crossing.